Patch 7.23 has been one of the best patches of all time. I'm not kidding. I actually think this patch is absolutely fantastic. So much so that I've been playing it a lot and learning about the patch. It's really been a blast. And as a result, we've made over 36 new pieces of content in the last week. Me, your boy, Speed. Frempo, a top offing player, and Yamson, a top carry player, have been dissecting the patch at length over on the main Game Leap website. We've had hundreds of people sign up in the last week, and they've been all raving about it. So if you're interested in understanding the patch better than everyone else, click the link down below in the description, and I'll see you there. What's up, guys? Speed here, and today I'm going to be doing a live game. This is me playing Pugna in the position 4 role, and I'm landing with a Pudge against an AA, so it's a pretty easy lane. Looks like it's going to be something of the sort of, like... AA Gyro. And I also have one for the Buckler build here today. Actually, don't need to use that. It's important that I cast my spells off cooldown, and we probably should be able to kite out this Gyro. I guess having the Fairy Fire now to start is actually really good. All right, that did more damage than I thought. So we're starting off to a bad start. How do we come back in the lane is the question now, now that we've we've fed and made the game hard for ourselves. <laughs> How do we actually make this work? First off, gonna go for the double nuke there. Easy, easy damage. And really just gonna be looking to trade. I probably should stand on the left side of the creeps. There's actually no reason for me to stand on the right here because I want to use the Pudge as my meat shield and sort of just hit the Gyro. So I can hardcore bully Gyro. Pugna has some of the highest attack range in Dota. And it's something you want to abuse when playing the hero. Well, I actually might be able to snipe this courier. So whenever you're trading, you want to auto attack, nuke auto attack. And that's kind of how I'm going to win the trade here. Right, unfortunately, the gyro is going to run at me, which is... Alright, I'm just going to buy out. Hey, my TP to the shrine? Yeah, so I'll just waste his time. I wanted to force his TP and then just kind of run it down, but might, might be able to actually get the courier on the way back here. I'm going for the courier. <laughs> oh! <laughs> buy out, buy out! Oh! <laughs> I'm not dead yet! I'll get the nuke off in an auto attack. Oh, that's value, boys. That's value. Are we going to get the rest of our mangoes now? Oh, my value. Wait, why isn't it putting the mangoes... All right, apparently it's going to make me hold my mangoes like this. That's fine. That was value, you guys. We baited him. We got our Pudge a lot of solo XP there and sniped, I believe, two courier. No, we only got one, right? That was that was cash money, though. All right, I got to disengage this gold feed. Don't want to don't wanna go too ham. Oh, that's a hook. That's a nice hook. It's a massive creep wave as well. Getting the last hits. And it's always good to help people last to under tower, right? You notice I help out that pudge there. It's very important. Now, at this point in the lane, the gyro is level 3, so I have to be very careful. I need to get boots ASAP so that I don't necessarily get destroyed by him. Now, I'm going to avoid just tanking this random AAE. And I do have level 2 blast now. They would clearly went for a pull here. I'm going to hit the AAE a little bit now that I'm level 3. Nuke this range creep. Now, at this point, I'm probably going to look for a side pull if I can get it. That'll be pretty nice for us. Um, Pudge obviously can look for a hook at any point in the lane. I probably can just auto this gyro. He only has three tangos, which really isn't too much. All right, A is going to bully me a bit. Are they really about to run at me? This is some gameplay from them. They're not killing me. I got to sell. I'm going to sell up, come back in. Damn, didn't get the gyro kill, but we'll be able to get the AA kill. Tried to get the higher priority kill first there. I knew the AA was always the easier kill, but it's, uh, you know, I knew the gyro, he also has like no salve. So the more damage I do to him, you know, the, the more he's actually crippled. So I'm pretty happy with that result. Probably going to go for a wand here in this lane because they're going super aggressive. I typically would rush mana boots, but I feel like, oh, this guy's so low. Oh, he's, oh I got a salve. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Oh, he's done for. All right, this is an easy hook. Oh, wow. Wow. And 50 gold. Wow. Oh my lord. Dude, we're popping off. Oh, now I'm going to go for a side pull. And after the side pull, I'm going to go for the runes. And this is absolutely huge. This is a really good sequence. It's kind of like what I like to call it, where it's like you make a good play and then you make another good play. Like you kill the rocket and you make a side pull. Now I'm going to get the bounty rune. So I get my lane back for my pudge so you can play a bit safer. He's not going to be able to get the... That's okay. Okay. Hey, I actually connected. Oh. Might need to help him here, but he'll be all right. Got to tank the rocket barrage with him. This is interesting by them. 
Oh, the A didn't die, huh? You shouldn't be able to get me here. <laughs> Alright, I should have casted my blast earlier there. I would have lived. I'm actually going to go for a bracer here. I'm committing all the stats. They're going so aggressive, so it's like, if I just buy some extra stats, I'll be able to dominate the lane. In addition, my punch is level 5, which is huge. He's so strong right now, which is great. I'm going to pick up a clarity as well. I'll buy a second ward. But yeah, I'm pretty tanky now. With this buckler, wand, and bracer, I'll be able to, like, sort of tank up some of the damage when they go on me because they're not really going to want to go in the punch. I mean, they can. Wow, is this a solo kill on a Gunka by Medusa? Oh, we messed up. Oh, I actually might be able to get that kill. <laughs> get down a ward to scout him out. Might actually find him here. I'm lucky. I don't know where he's going. Okay, I'm not sure. Looks like he probably went back to base. I was hoping he'd go to the shrine and I'd pick up a free kill, but looks like that is not going to be the fate today. But yeah, this top lane went really well. Um, considering we died off the double kill, it was just some really good trading. I spam my Q a lot, you notice, guys? Like, I really prioritize using my Q a ton. Quick little nuke here. It's a lot of damage. Man, that was a fairly mediocre hook. That was, was going to hurt a bit. Decrep him so he misses some last hits. Let's make him feel bad. <laughs> it's good to get into people's heads sometimes. Alright, we almost have Dismember, which is good. I think they have a ward here as well, by how they kind of went on me so quickly. I don't know for sure. And I can even go for a side pull, because I know we're close to the Pudge level 6. And because we're close to the Pudge level 6, okay, he has it now. We can most likely go aggressive. And so if I side pull, it's going to let us go even more aggressive, because the lane's going to be further back. So I'll do that real quick. Quick little side pull. Now I'm basically just shifting. I'm shifting the lane over here. You just drag it together. We can fight them here. Okay, they definitely have a ward. What in the world? They are gaming. I don't know about this. <laughs> We're great. Oh, I tried, I tried. Why is this guy chasing me? Leave me alone, man. A mediocre cooldown. I think because they have a ward, they still see me, so I'm gonna have to be a bit careful. Yeah, they definitely have a ward. When people are reacting like way too smart, I mean maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're they're just good, but my intuition is that they have a, an observer ward here. Look at my intuition guy, I'm so smart. Wow. Big brain speed here. I need this really bad. This level 6 lets us solo kill anyone. Then like, th that fight wouldn't even be close. They just did so much damage with the Rocket Barrage plus uh, AA. Get some tower damage here. Then we're gonna work on our the ones next. Gyro might try to wrap on me. So I'm gonna stay out of vision. Because the only way he outplays us if he, is if he rockets me. Oh boy. Or I guess it... What the heck? How did he torrent me? <laughs> that was the most bizarre torrent I've ever seen in the world. I think you should dismember him, brother. Some easy kills. Easy. So it's very important that in that fight I kite backwards in particular, that I'm always running backwards. Really, really, really important to actually kite people. Give this guy a little bit of a suck. Just so he's low on HP. It's always good to use uh, low cooldown spells to harass your opponents. Just so that they can't make a play later on. You know what I mean? He'll be more uncomfortable to make a play. Which is good. Yeah, they just recently buffed the life drain. So it does 25 more damage to level 1. Which is pretty huge. My Medusa's level 11. This, this Kunkka's roaming to grief the side lanes. But that's all he's getting. He's just roaming. <laughs> he's just getting bopped by Adusa. I kind of want to defend mid so that the Dusa can sort of just full-time jungle, but it looks like she's going for the efficiency play. Check and respect. Don't really want to lane against Puck because I can't use my ulti against Puck. It's just straight up impossible. The hero just naturally evades it. I want to fight bottom. Oh wow, he got this. He got the Ironwood branch. I have so much XP here. I'm level 7 without the tome, which is really nice. And now I don't really know what play to make exactly, so I'm kind of just sitting around to see if I can uh, counter gank a potential Medusa gank. But for the most part, I sort of just want to get XP in a lane of farm. The Medusa's kind of taking the lanes, but... Because my levels are really important this game. Oh boy, this guy's dead. I'm going to try to... Just a little defensive suck here. kind of wish I sucked the gyro. Nice. 
Now at this point, I'm just going to continue to do the same thing. I really want to get this health talent. And the movement speed's good too, but the health is nice against their team comp because they have a lot of burst damage. So they're probably going to be trying to jump me with like Puck and Kunkka this, this game. And as a result, I'm probably going to go to health and that'll help me stay alive. And then I'll have this Aether Lens eventually, which will also help me stay alive. Unfortunately, I'm not really getting a lane to farm. My Void Spirit's kind of just farming bottom. Pudge is taking now mid and... I'm just taking top, which is fine. You know what I mean? This is how high Mora games usually go, where a lot of the lanes are being farmed. But definitely in your lower Mora games, guys, make sure you're looking to, to actually take farm. Like, even if I auto attack this, this Mud Golem camp while I'm looking for things to do, it's just some a bit of efficiency that'll help me, you know, potentially win a fight by having an extra 200 health. So, even though it seems like nothing... Oh, am I getting gun on? What is this? Does that have a ward? No. Yeah, my team's clearly just playing for some efficiency right now. I don't really like this idea of going on the... Don't want to run into them. Wow, this drive is getting shredded. Oh, save him! Oh, that life drain, baby. Saving the Knicks. Oh, I'm about to get axed. I'm going to need a hook, brother. Back up and hook me. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Why are you getting... <laughs> ah! Dude, you, you got me killed. I'm asserted dead. Oh, am I alive? Oh, I'm alive. I'm gonna have to yoink some of that creep. <laughs> I feel like I have no gold this game. I really do have low CS. I'm not able to really take any towers. I want to go for the mid tower, but they have Kunkka, which makes it essentially impossible. Kunkka techies AA. Like, if I walk up, I just die. It's really, really sad. So I kind of just have to play this slow game, uh, which is fine. You know, and I, like, I'm not, I'm not like, tilted, you know? It's just like, uh, it's just how it is, you know? Is this a Void Spirit solo kill? I wanna get, I'm gonna give my Void Spirit mana. Now my downtime, once again, same thing guys. You notice like, I really try to make this a priority in my downtime. If there's nothing to do, no waves to shove, right? Top shoved in, mid is just not really an option. Um, I mean, technically, I guess we could fight mid, but uh, like, I'll just take some camps, really. Like, even if it's this camp, which takes me forever to kill, like, it's fine. It, it, it's much better than me just standing around and doing nothing. Um, I know it costs me a bit of mana, but I'll be buying clarities later on. I'm gonna have this Aether Lens soon. It is a bit late. Like, I definitely don't think I... They see me? What in the world? I know, he's just playing for efficiency. Oh, this Jaro might be dead. Alright, Nyx didn't go in. I'm gonna try to kill this camp. I know they're here, but... Alright, we're going for it. Oh, what? Dude, instantly dewarded. Feels bad, man. Alright, we're gonna put it a little bit further back. <laughs> um, Aether Lens is huge on Pugnet. Actually, lets you function as a hero. And I'm gonna go for a Glimmer Cape next to deal with all their magical damage. I'm just gonna sap this XP. I'm always playing for efficiency, you know? Like, even if it's just sap large creep camp. And as you can see, I don't really need to play with my team all the time. People get this wrong where it's like when they're playing Dota, they sort of just run around with their team the whole game and it really doesn't help anyone. Like it doesn't necessarily help your team. It will just make them feel obliged to take fights they don't want to take. Like I have a Medusa. You think Medusa wants to run around fighting right now? No. So it's much better if I just help the Medusa by pushing in top so that they run heroes at me top. Now I'm looking at the minimap. I see no one, right? And because I see no one, I'm only going to push in one wave and instantly back to the trees, right? Super, super important. Wow, my Medusa is a vampire. He's very hype. Uh, I have seven clarities now, as I talked about. I like to buy clarities, and I'm basically just going to play for efficiency. I'm going to work towards my Glimmer Cape. I'm not going to push out this top wave because I do not see anyone, and they deworded me here. And because they deworded me, there's most likely also a ward. That is a very common theme. I'm tempted to go for a top because I see the, the Kunkka and the Gyro here, but I'm not sold. I probably should buy some sentries so I can try to deal with these, these wards. This is probably warded, dude, so just heads up. I can TP, but this doesn't look so good. I'll TP anyway. My punch is actually so tanky. Wow, he's still alive. That's insane. Give him the suck. Even though it's not a lot of damage, it is important to suck people like that. Oh my god, we're all getting like giga coiled. Quick little nuke. Dink. And they're all dead. Oh! That hook from downtown, baby! I just got to be careful for some AA blasting coming now. My whole team's got to be careful about this potential AA blast coming in or else we're all going to die. But you notice in these team fights, like, once again, I, I know my team's having a good game and clearly we outplayed them. Um, a lot of it obviously comes down to the laning stage. But if I, like, how do I lose this game? You know what I mean? Like, you have to ask yourself, what would this game look like if I was just running around trying to make plays the whole game? Uh, it would probably look like this, where I'm dead. Right? And that doesn't feel too good. It doesn't feel good at all. 
Oh my god, Techies almost died to- <laughs> He lost a thousand HP because of that. But it would probably look like that, where we just run up into their vision and we get gone on. Uh, clearly that was me making a very good example of what not to do. I'm definitely not paying enough attention. Oh boy. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's great work. But it's important to understand, like, you have to really look at your team comp as a playmaker and be like, okay, when does my team actually want to play the game? Like, like, as five, when do we actually want to start making moves on their side of the map? If the answer is like, eh, not really, then don't do it. Like, we have a deuce and a void spirit. It was going radiance. We don't need to go make plays all the time. Like, sure, we can fight them if for outposts and bounty runes and, you know, I can shove in waves to create pressure, but it doesn't mean we have to just... Also, I kind of want to buy tranquils so I can move around quickly. This feels also really good against all their magical damage. Uh, rip, rip outpost. Um, but, like, now we've taken their tier run tower and we can start invading. Uh, I have a lot of wards in stock. I'm going to pop a smoke to get them down. A lot of damage onto the AA there. He's dropping low. He does have uh, Aether Lens, unfortunately, though. Oh, nice. Yeah, the, you always want to check these ward spots. Especially with the new patch, people are still just constantly warding the hills. Specifically because they don't really know where else to ward. Uh, so I highly recommend you, you just sentry heals. Like, even here, I don't know, but... I'm just gonna... Ah, do I even ward the hill? We are kind of invading. I'm gonna try to get one a little bit more sneaky. Nice. It's important that I kite back here. I think I saved my pudge with that decrep onto the kunkka, so that was pretty good. Um, and yeah, now I just want to keep kiting out. Guess I'm gonna hit some bombs as well. <laughs> He's like, nope. Poor guy. Mm, I think it's a good nether ward health game. They, they really need to kill it in these fights, otherwise AA is just going to kill himself. Same thing with techies. So I'm going to take the nether ward talent. It, it makes it really hard to kill because it takes him three extra attacks, and three extra attacks is 100% the difference for a lot of heroes. It's like a massive, massive difference. And yeah, my Medusa should be able to carry. And really, like, I, I didn't have to make a particularly large amount of space. We had a good game. They don't have heroes to invade our jungle. So we're really just all playing all around timings. Um, and that's exactly what's happening here. And I'm going to put up the nether ward for the high ground push. And just try to throw out some th some nether blasts here and there. They really have to kill this thing. Otherwise, they're going to have issues. I can decrypt it. <laughs> and just annoy them. <laughs> like, look at, look at him try to kill this thing. Poor guy. I can just waste their entire game trying to kill another ward. Now I have to be careful. I, I could nether bless the tower, but it could mean that I get uh, rocketed or dream coiled or X'd and any of those spells kill me, right? I can't afford to get hit by any of those spells at this current state in the game. Um, and as a result, I need to stay really far back and not nether blast even towers. Ow, my HP. I do have another nether ward though, which is hype. I'm going to just throw that down on the high ground over here. And now because they're far back, I can get down a quick little nether blast, but I need to keep kiting out. But I can keep my camera forward, right? I'm going to kite back. They're far back, so I can throw another blast. But for the most part, I'm staying really, really far back, right? I'm playing really cautious. I even kind of wanted to crep my pudge a little bit, but I'm not going to do it. It's a hard push. They have a lot of high ground defense. I actually think my pudge might die here. Wow, Gyro's killing himself for the nether ward. Ha! <laughs> he really needs the nether ward. In case AA casts a spell, he'll kill himself. All right, yeah, and, that, and that's really important in team fighting. I know what I did there might have seemed really basic, but it is. Sometimes it is the case, like, what you're doing is just really basic. You know what I mean? The, the important thing is that I'm not getting caught up in the fights. You notice, like, when I'm team fighting a lot of time, it looks really clean and smooth for the most part. And if it doesn't, it means I got caught out of position. So think about it, that in your games. Like, if you're getting caught out and you feel like everything's just hectic and you can't tell what's going on, it's probably a result of you going way too far up, right? That's usually the main issue. And you really want to try to avoid that. Look at this damage. This hero's insane. Pugna does so much damage. And now we can just start nether blasting all their towers. Kind of wish I had the talent now, but what are you going to do? Save my pudge some XP. HP, not XP. What's going on with the boys? I would love to heal my, uh... Nether word to get a kill. Damn, nether word is shredding them out here, though. That's what we call a, um, a tilting decrep. That is entirely in, in the intent of tilting them. Now, the gyro, I mean, the kunk of my TB behind us. Also, when I'm team fighting, I'm looking at who's respawning to kind of see positioning. I'm like, okay, do I need to back up? Do I need to look for someone TPing behind me? Do I need to pick up this item? Sure. And, and me, me. I can even take the shrine now. Oh, looks like my team's getting caught out here a bit. Punch is most likely dead, but we're going to get up that nether ward, as I talked about. 
Always the biggest of deals. Look at this Kunkka's HP. This is all me. Half HP on a Kunkka. Now we back out, right? I'm waiting for my spells. No need to auto attack. Gonna decrep up the gyro so he can't hit my nether ward and can't auto attack my teammates. Looks like we're gonna die here. No big deal. But the, yeah, once again, the nether ward is putting in work. Gotta get the decrep off. Oh, damn. Go on this guy. This guy. Here comes the damage. Here comes the damage. <laughs> Bit of crap, real quick. Ah! Hell! Yeah, but as you can see, Pugna as a position four is actually pretty strong, just because of the utility you provide from the backline. As long as you stay alive and keep down your Nether Ward, you just grief certain team comps unbelievably hard. Like literally, people can't cast their spells. It's insane. Now, I'm even considering taking the heal this game. Not gonna do it, but it's not bad. Here comes the suck. I look at this damage. I, it's not even like. I had to do anything crazy. It's just free damage. Casey casts a spell. Nice. Free 100 damage on the Kunkka. But like, you have to think another word like this. It's like, if you put it down and people cast, like, let's say 5,000 mana worth of spells and fights, which is very reasonable, you're doing, like, over 6,000 damage or something like that. Like, I don't even know what the number... Maybe it's even more. Um, but that's really how insane Pugna can be as a 4. And I didn't really... I, I did random Pugna this game, but all I'm really trying to say... Look, like, look at this... Ready? Look at this damage. If I could move... No heals for you. Put up the quick little nether ward. Give it the old decrep. And now everyone feels bad about casting spells. Hey, come on, bro. Here, I'll save you. <laughs> yeah, buddy. And uh, yeah, this is kind of pugna. But as you can see, guys, sometimes the key to winning is not actually doing anything crazy. It's not necessarily making crazy plays like everyone thinks it is and becoming like this god of Dota. Sometimes it's all about just slowing it down, pushing in waves, and waiting for your timings, right? We hit our timing, we go up the high ground with our timing, but we had a very severe lead and the game ends. In addition, you know, we definitely uh, outskilled them a little bit, but hopefully you guys can kind of see some value uh, from this game. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. And of course, I'll see you in the next one. Hey, thanks everyone for watching the video. But before you leave, I just want to mention once again, we've made 36 new pieces of content in the last week. It's insane. Like we're literally pumping out more and more every single day. Just extremely consistent, amazing content that we are making just for you guys so that you can excel in 7.23. So check it out and I'll see you there.